Hey everyone, it's Jess from Minerva here today to share with you a step-by-step sew-along -step tutorial for the New Look Pattern 6429. There'll be some information for if you are new to sewing or using commercial patterns as well as the step-by-step -step tutorial itself. You can save this video to refer back to at a later date as well as find all the materials and products that I've mentioned linked below for your convenience. Before we get started, I'd recommend watching this video all the way through to the end to familiarize yourself with the steps, and I'll go through a couple of tips and tricks as well that you might want to use. Let's get started with looking at the pattern. As you can see, the pattern comes with four variations. Each variation finishes just above the knee, has a long dart either side of the front as well as darts down the back. It has an invisible zip opening along the center back with a halter neck collar. There are two sleeveless and two sleeved options with either a solid front, a sheer center front insert or tab inserts. For the purposes of this video, I will be showing you the sleeveless and sleeved variations for A and B, as well as talking you through the additional stages for the variations C and D. Turning the packet over, you'll be able to see the size guide, the suggested fabrics list, the yardage for each of the fabrics for each variation, as well as the extra materials required to make this. When picking your size, don't go off your high street shop size as these vary from country to country and company to company. Instead, measure yourself for the start of each project and use those measurements to find your size. I'll be making a size 10. Most fabrics will work with this pattern from medium weight fabrics like brocade and crepes to lighter weight of fabrics such as your cotton types. You'll also need an invisible 22 inch zip as well as your matching thread. The fabric I'm using today is this blue John Caldor Lozano cotton sateen fabric which has an abstract print that I thought would work well with any of the variations of this pattern. It is a medium weight non-stretch fabric. Once you've chosen your fabric our site has a great feature that will add the matching thread to your basket for the chosen fabric. I am using a Gutemann Sew All Polyester Sewing Thread in navy to match my fabric as well as a navy closed end invisible zip. I will also need interfacing for the collar and for that I'll be using this black knit super stretch interfacing. It also comes in white if you're using a light coloured fabric. When you open the packet you'll find the thin pattern sheets and the instructions. Let's look at these first. They come with an illustrated key to understand the different icons throughout the instructions, the instructions themselves and a cutting layout guide. These layouts are a suggestion. If you are pattern matching with a particular fabric then you may need to move about the pieces slightly differently. Just remember to take into account the grain line on each of the pattern pieces as you place them. Moving on to the pattern pieces themselves, the pattern sheets you can iron on a very low heat to get the creases out to make them a bit easier to cut. Once you've cut out your particular size, you'll then need to look at them to see how many of the pieces you require. So using the cutting layout guide, this is how I fit all the template pieces onto the fabric. Some of them you may need to use the template twice if you need to cut extras out that you can't get from the one piece. Now you have all the pieces cut out, it's time to put them together. To start off with, we need to stay stitch along the neckline. To make the darts, start with the fabric the wrong side facing up and then join the right sides together and pin. This dart is an awkward shape so you can draw on the sewing line and end point if you think you'll need that to help you. When you start to sew the dart, make sure you start from the raw edge side and move towards the end point. When you reach the end point, sew off the edge of the fabric so you have a little tail of stitches together without any fabric caught in between them. You can either then tie these tails together or tack them into the seam allowance of the dart. To do this, lift the foot up and put the dart back under the needle with the excess side of the dart. Drop the needle and sew a few stitches to, and then do a stop stitch. The secure end should now look like this. When pressing a dart, make sure you fold the seam excess towards the centre and avoid the very tip of the dart when pressing from the back of the fabric. Flip the piece over and then press again, this time the whole length of the dart. If you are making variation C, this is where you would insert the shear panel to the top of the neckline. If you are making variation D, this is where you'll need to make the tabs that sit between the neckline and the collar. You have to add interfacing to these and then sew the backs and the fronts together. 
There are little dots on the templates you can transfer to your material that you can use to line up the tabs with the neckline. You'll need to hand baste these into position before moving on. Before we start sewing the back piece, we need to transfer the dart points from the pattern template to the material. There are several different ways you can do this, but my preferred method is using tailor tacks. Start by cutting four long lengths of thread, at least 20 centimeters. You can use any thread for this as you'll be removing it later. I'm using a brighter color thread, so hopefully you can see it better. Fold each thread in half and then thread the needle with the folded end. With the needle threaded, snip the loop so your needle now is threaded with two lengths of thread. While the pattern template is still pinned to the fabric, push the needle through the dart marker, leaving a tail on either side of the fabric. Do this with all the dart points and and then carefully unpin and pull off the template. Then at each point, pull through one of the threads to each side like this. If you pull the threads all the way through, don't worry, just simply repin the template back onto the fabric and start again. So you have one thread in each piece of the fabric that would perfectly line up together. You should then have a long diamond of threaded tails through your fabric in both pieces. With the fabric the wrong side up, use pins to match the centre points like this. and then fold the fabric along the midline. Lay flat and pin both sides together. Again, you can draw your line and fabric marker if you think it will help you sew straight. Sewing this dart is just the same principle as the side darts we put in the front piece earlier, except this time we're starting from the center of the dart working down one side, remembering again to go off the fabric and finish as you did the front dart. To do this, lift the foot up and put the dart back under the needle with the excess side of the dart. Drop the needle and sew a few stitches to, and then do a stop stitch. With one side done, reposition the fabric and sew the dart in the other direction. With the darts finished, press to the centre, avoiding the tips of the darts again from the back of the fabric, turn over and press the whole length. If the dart is pulling the piece out of shape, you can make a small V notch at the centre of the excess material of the dart, but you should find with a good pressing it stays where it should. To finish off the back piece, stay stitch again around the neck. And now we need to sew the back and front together. Once you have sewn the side seams, make sure to press the seam well. If you are making a sleeved variation, this is where we put the sleeves together. Start with stay stitching along the upper edge of the sleeve fronts and backs. A trick I use when making sleeves is to put a pin into the front section. That way when it's together I'll know which one will be the left and which one will be the right. With right sides together, sew the front and back of the sleeve together and press the seams open. We're going to use a narrow hem to finish the edge of the sleeve. To do this, press the raw hem up half a centimeter towards the inside of the sleeve. Fold up again and press yet again. Then stitch the hem into place. To attach the sleeve to the body of the dress, turn the sleeve right side out and the dress wrong side out. With right sides together, Pin starting at the underarm seam and sew around the armhole. Run a second row of stitches 3mm away from the first line in the seam allowance. This will add extra strength to the seam. Trim away any excess and press towards the opening of the sleeve. If you are not adding a sleeve, we need to add interfacing to the armhole. If you're making variation B, then you need to apply interfacing to pieces seven and eight, stitch together, and then finish along the unnotched edge. 
This can be done with either a narrow hem like the one I showed you for finishing off the sleeve, a zigzag stitch on a normal machine or you can use an overlocker as I've done here. To fuse the interfacing, lay the facing material bubbly side down on the wrong side of your main fabric. Make sure you have a scrap piece of cotton to hand to act as a barrier so the fusible doesn't melt straight onto the iron plate. Iron in small sections so as to not stretch the fusible out of shape. With right sides together and the interfacing on the outside of the dress, pin and stitch the facing to the armhole. We then need to understitch the seam allowance to the facing itself. Make sure that you turn the facing the correct way round, press and then secure the seam allowance either with a machine, by hand or a small piece of fusible web. If you are making variation D, you'll need to apply interfacing to pieces 8 and 13, stitch together and then finish along the unnotched edge. With right sides together, pin and stitch along the armhole and neckline. Again, understitch as far as possible. Now let's move on to the collar. Apply interfacing to one of the piece fives and two of the four piece sixes. As you can see the pieces make a sort of horseshoe shape. Stitch the front and backs together at the shoulder seams and press. Along the outer edge, machine stitch a line 1.5 centimeters in. It's this edge that's going to be joined to the top of the dress. To join these together, match the edges up and pin into place. If you have a sleeve to work with, use the shoulder seams in both sections to anchor the points. If you don't have a sleeve, there are dots on the template pieces you can use to make sure everything lines up. Without a sleeve, it's the collar edge that essentially forms the top part of the armhole. Finish by trimming the seam allowance and notching the small leftover excess. As I said before, the pattern calls for an invisible zip. I know a lot of people get put off by these, so hopefully this walkthrough will help you see that they're not that bad. I'm starting on the left side, but it doesn't make any difference if you have a preference. Start with opening your zip and line it up with the fabric so that the teeth are on the left and pointing up. The top stopper needs to be set 2cm down from the top of the collar and the teeth 1.5cm from the edge of the fabric. Pin this side of the zipper tape down and hand baste into place to keep it from moving when you start to sew. If you are confident with zips you may not need to do this. As you can see I'm using an invisible zipper foot which will help roll the teeth out of the way of the needle. You can use your hands as well to make sure that the stitches get as close to the teeth as possible. That's what makes it invisible from the outside. Once we've done one side we need to line up the other side. To do this roll the bottom tabs like this and then flip so that the tape side is in line with the edge of the fabric and the teeth pointing up again. Line them up with the same measurements as we did with the first side and then hand baste into position. So this side again with the invisible zipper foot. Once you've finished the zipper, turn everything the right way out and check that you can easily run the zip up and down. Now we need to close up the back of the dress. Pin the back seams together and get ready to sew with an adjustable zipper foot. So from the hem up towards the zip. When you reach the zip, manipulate the seam so that you can stitch along the same line. Ultimately you want to end up with this. The reason for this fiddly step is so that it makes a nice stop at the bottom of your zip. You only want to come up a couple of centimeters past the bottom of the zip tabs. Lastly, you want to secure the bottom tabs of the zip to the seam allowance. This can be done by hand stitching in matching thread or with the machine. Now we need to finish off the collar. We need to take the remaining two piece sixes and the one piece five. This time we're not interfacing them. Once they are sewn together, run a stay stitching line on the inside edge just one centimeter in and another line on the outside along the seam line measuring 1.5 centimeters from the outer edge. Press along the stitching, turning it up to the wrong side of the fabric. Finally, trim the excess down to six millimeters. Now we attach collar to collar. With right sides together, match up the collars starting at the zip end and working your way all the way around to the other zip. Once pinned, sew all the way around the top. Next, we need to secure the top of the zip between the two collars. To do this, set the machine up with your adjustable zipper foot again and sew along parallel to the teeth. Snip the corner, turn the fabric the right way around and press along the whole neckline. 
Finally, understitch as far either side as you can, remembering first to press the seam and then stitch the seam allowance to the inside part of the collar, i.e. the side without the fusible on it. The last stage for the collar is a bit fiddly. To anchor the free side of the collar on the inside, we're going to do a stitch in the ditch seam. This basically means we're going to sew along the stitch line between the collar and the dress, catching the pressed edge of the inside of the collar as we go along. With the inside of the dress towards you, pin the facing down, keeping your pins on the outside of the fabric. Once everything is pinned, we can start sewing. When this is done, you'll have a visible stitch line on the back, but seemingly no line on the front. Take this very slowly to make sure that you're not veering off the stitch line, but you're still catching the hemmed edge underneath. Continue all the way along the neckline. If you are making a sleeved version, then you've now finished the collar. If you are making a sleeveless variation, carry out the stitch in the ditch line along all the areas where the collar meets the dress, knotting it when you reach the end and, pick and picking it up again at the next seam. To finish off the unattached bit, you can either slip stitch by hand for an invisible finish or you can top stitch. If you are going to top stitch, then aesthetically you'll need to carry on the top stitching all the way around the rack. I'd still recommend doing the stitch in the ditch step as well, just for extra security. Once you're finished, the seam should look like this. I'm going to be finishing this with an invisible hem, but if you have a preferred method for hemming, then go ahead and do that. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I'm quite short, and so therefore I need to shorten the dress before I hem it so that it sits in the right place. As you can see, I've marked on several lines on the bottom of the dress. The top line is where I want the bottom of the dress to eventually sit. In this case, I'm shortening it by five centimeters. I then need to mark a line two centimeters down from this top line, and then a third line 0.5 of a centimeter below that. If you are not shortening the length, you only need to mark on the 0.5 centimeter line and then one 1.5 centimeters above that. Trim away any excess. Then press the raw edge up along the 0.5 cm line and secure the fold with a stitch. Next, press the then stitched edge up along your upper line, in my case the original 5 cm line. And now for the invisible part. Pin the hem to prevent twisting as you work your way around the edge. When you're doing this yourself, obviously you want to use a matching thread. I'm using a bright thread again just so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Anchor your knotted thread into the seam allowance in the side seam and the turned up hem. We're going to be working from left to right here. Then move along roughly half an inch and carefully stitch into the back layer of the fabric from right to left, keeping it close to the hemline. Keep your stitch as small as you can. Move along another half inch to the right and again stitch right to left, this time only in the turned up hem. You do not want to be catching the front fabric here. Continue all the way around, making sure that you keep the tension just right but not so tight that it pulls and twists the fabric. Eventually you'll have a stitch line like this on the inside, but on the outside it should look like this. If done correctly, you should not see any of the thread from the front. Even with this bright thread, you can barely see any of the stitches. I just wanted to share a couple of tips and tricks that I picked up along the way whilst putting this together. Uh, firstly, the instructions don't call for any finishing of the seam allowance. Um, and as you can see from my one, uh, the seams are already the, sorry. The seam allowance is already starting to fray, uh, which affects the longevity of the garment, as you don't want it to start fraying into the seam itself, and also it can be a bit itchy as you're wearing it. To avoid that, before you put any of the pieces together, you can overlock um, each of the pieces and all of the sides individually, or use a zigzag stitch as well, um, and that will prevent the fabric from fraying if you're working with a fabric that is prone to fraying, such as this one. Um, you can also instead, if you didn't want to do that, you could end the seams with something like a French seam, um, which would add a unique feature which you wouldn't necessarily see on a shop bought garment, and it would encase all of the raw edges as well, so it would still prevent the fraying. Secondly, I just wanted to say a quick word about the fabric that I chose. While I do love it and it works really well hiding all of the seams and would work with any of the variations that are available with the pattern, the circular print 
has ended up drawing your attention to the bust uh, just because of how I put the template on the fabric. Um, it can be easily avoided, it would just be the case of playing, perhaps playing a little bit with the template to make sure that where your bust dart finishes doesn't end up on the edge of the circle and therefore drawing your attention to the bust itself. It shouldn't put you off using a pattern fabric in any way, it's just something to be mindful of when you're cutting your pieces out. Thirdly, I just wanted to comment on the zip placement. Um, the instructions called for the zip to be set in two centimetres down from the top of the tab. However, on mine, that has resulted in the stopper being visible um, from the edge of the collar, meaning that the zip doesn't actually go all the way to the top um, and is actually then not level as well because of that. Um, so to get around that, when measuring your zip, when you're ready to put it in, I would advise measuring from the top of the tab to just a couple of the teeth below the stopper and then using that as your guide point for the left and the right sides. Because that way when you fold it over into your collar, everything will be nicely in case and your zipper will run all the way to the top. And lastly to the fit itself, while this isn't supposed to be a very fitted garment, when I put it on to see how it did fit, the sleeved side fit very well, however on the sleeveless side the armhole is very baggy and as you can see modesty is somewhat compromised here. If I were to make this again um, I would put it on again and find out where it needs to sit in order to close the armhole up a little bit more. You don't need to fit it close to you but we want it enough so that it's not going to come forward at all when, as you move. And then whatever this measurement is here would then add that into the seam allowance um, for the side seam when you remake it. Um, remember whatever any alterations you make to the outside you also need to take into account with the facing as well as you will have changed the shape of the armhole. If you know you might have similar alteration problems as myself I would suggest making a mock-up first as you'll know if there's any alterations that you need to make you'll be aware of those and know where to put them in. I hope this video has helped you understand how to put this garment together as well as maybe giving you a little bit more confidence if you are new to sewing. If you have any questions or queries about anything you've seen in this video please comment them below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And if you have tried making anything from this pattern we'd love to see what you come up with. So if you haven't already why not create an account with Minerva to share your creations with our sewing community. Thank you for watching and be sure to come back regularly for more sewing inspiration. Music